Well, hey there, church. Pastor Sean here with your word for the day. Today's topic is about baptism. We are continuing with our Colossians study in chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there now. Uh, in him you are also circumcised, with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him, through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Okay, first of all, baptism is such a beautiful step of faith. And I want to clarify at the beginning that baptism itself is not what saves us. It's belief and declaration that Jesus is the Lord of your life. That's what saves you. And Romans 10, 9 says this, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible is clear about this. So baptism, although not our saving grace, it is our way of professing that inner salvation outwardly. It's been said before that baptism is just an outward expression of what's happening on the inside. And if you are sure about following Jesus, if you are sure about Jesus being your savior in this life and for all eternity, baptism is and always be the next logical step for you. This is your way of letting the other body of believers know that you've made this lifelong and life-changing decision. This is your way of telling them you're ready to be a part of this church family that spans time and space itself. Jesus tells us in Matthew 28 to go and baptize. And in Acts chapter 2, Peter tells a crowd of people who have just recognized Jesus Christ as the Messiah that they should repent from their sins and be baptized. So I have a few questions for you as we close. Number one. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you aren't baptized, what's the holdup? What are you waiting for? In Acts 8, upon learning about the gospel of Jesus Christ, a eunuch who Philip was talking to saw a random body of water and said, look, there is a body of water. What is stopping me from getting baptized? Guys, what is stopping you from getting baptized? Is it questions? Is it bad thoughts? Is it the temperature of the water? What is your holdup from finding the first body of water and getting baptized in it? Now, for those who don't know about Jesus Christ or what he's done, Jesus Christ died for your sins. Those things that hold you back in life, the things in life that cause you or others pain, those things or addictions that just hold you down. Jesus has died to free you from sin's death grip so that you may be right in the eyes of God. Sin doesn't just cause death and misery in this world. Sin is also separates us from our relationship with God and Jesus took our sins to make our relationship with God right again. And then when sin was defeated, he was also raised from the dead, conquering death and giving us access to eternal life with him. If you want to know more about what Jesus did and how this affects your life, give us a call or email us at Calvary. We would love nothing more than to talk to you about the good news of Jesus Christ. And funny enough, baptism is actually a presentation of this good news, of Jesus dying and being raised again. You are buried with Christ in his death, and that's shown by being fully immersed underwater. And then you are raised to newness of life with Jesus. And that's you being lifted up out of that water. If you or anyone else has any questions about baptism, please reach out to us. Leave a message, comment, an email, a call, a text, anything. This is such an important step of faith. And I can't wait for you to make this decision or even rededicate your life to Christ. Anyways, guys, have a great day. Be blessed.